Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation of fifth degree. At this point, you can just go out and pause the video and try the problem yourself first. Okay, so we do have x minus 1 to the fifth power plus x plus 3 to the fifth power equal to 242 multiplied by x plus 1. So we're going to be solving this equation and it it's obviously not solvable in the general case because it's a fifth degree equation. It's a quintic, right? So what do we do? We're going to be using some interesting techniques, some algebra manipulations. We'll make this problem easier. So we're going to be taking advantage of symmetry, in other words. So if you look at the left-hand side, you're going to notice that we have x minus 1 and x plus 3. So if I go ahead and take those two expressions and average them, and I'm going to show you, you'll understand why we're averaging them in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add those up. So x minus 1 and x plus 3 divided by 2. That's going to give me 2x plus 2 divided by 2, which is equal to x plus 1. So the average of x minus 1 and x plus 3 is x plus 1. Obviously, it's in the middle. You know that, right? But more importantly, we have the same term on the right-hand side. So the average of the x minus 1 and x plus 3 appears on the right-hand side of the equation as well. Therefore, I think it's important to use substitution here. So here's how we're, uh, we're going to use the substitution. We're going to call x plus 1 u and then we're going to be writing everything else in terms of u so if x plus 1 is u that means x is equal to u minus 1 from here x minus 1 is going to be u minus 2 and x plus 3 is going to be u plus 2 so this is the type of symmetry that we've been looking for that's why we were looking for the average we were looking for the midpoint and then we were able to get that on both sides of the equation so let's go ahead and proceed now, once you make the substitution, you're going to be getting u minus 2 to the fifth power, okay, plus, so let me go ahead and do this. The other term is going to give me u plus 2 to the fifth power. So let me go ahead and write these down, like expand them, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add those. Or let me do it this way. So let me go ahead and erase and keep the same structure. So let's see. Okay, so we're going to be adding... We're going to be adding the other term, which is u plus 2 to the fifth power, and it's supposed to equal 242u. Okay, nice. Now, notice that we have u minus 2 to the fifth power and u plus 2 to the fifth power, which we can apply the binomial theorem to, but something nice is going to happen, not only just the binomial theorem, but something good is going to come out of this. Okay, let's go ahead and do it and see what happens. So if you use the Pascal's triangle, the fifth row with the coefficients of 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Let's go ahead and write these down here because those are the coefficients that we're going to use, right, for a plus b to the fifth power. So let's go ahead and expand the first term. u minus 2 to the fifth power is going to be u to the fifth power minus 5 times u to the fourth multiplied by 2 plus 10 times u cubed multiplied by 2 squared minus 10 times u squared times 2 cubed plus 5 times u times 2 to the 4th power and finally minus 1 times 2 to the 5th power. So let's go ahead and simplify this if you want. Let's go ahead and simplify this first because once you have that, the second one is going to be easier to write. So the first part is going to be, so I'm only simplifying this part first, u to the 5th minus 10 u to the 4th plus 4 times 10 is 40, and then 8 times 10 is 80, 5 times 16 is also 80, and then minus 32. Now, this is u minus 2 to the 5th power, and then we're going to be writing u plus 2 to the 5th power. The only difference is going to be 2, uh, negative 2 will be replaced with 2, so everything is going to be positive, but exact same terms. u to the 5th plus 10, u to the 4th, plus 40 u to the third plus 80 times u squared plus 60 u plus 32. And now we're going to be adding these terms up. And the result is going to equal 242 u, which is the right hand side. Okay, when you add these terms, notice that the negative terms are going to cancel out. 
So we're going to get a simpler expression. So this is basically the critical part of uh, using the symmetry here in this quintic equation. So u to the fifth plus u to the fifth is going to be 2u to the fifth plus I'll be getting 80u to the third plus 120u and the right hand side is equal to 242u. Okay? By the way, this should not be a 60U. I don't know why I wrote that. That should be 80. So then, okay, these are 80U plus 80U. And this should be a 160U, not 120U. Okay. Now, this is what we get. And that if you subtract 242U from both sides, then you'll be getting 2U to the fifth power. 2U to the fifth power plus... 80 u cubed minus if you subtract those you're going to get negative 82 u is equal to zero now obviously we can divide both sides by two but not, not only that we can actually factor out a 2 u here again we have the happy birthday thing like 2 u let's take out the 2 u and inside the parentheses we're going to get u to the fourth plus 40 u squared minus 41 okay this is cool because u equals zero is one of the solutions. Okay, good. But what about the other solutions? Well, the other solutions are just going to be coming from a quartic equation, but which is kind of like what we call biquadratic so because there's no cubic term, there's no linear term. So we can do the substitution u squ squared equals y. And then this will become y squared plus 40y minus 41. And as you, as you see here, the sum of the coefficients of this equation is 1. What does that mean? This came up in another video. When the sum of the coefficients is 1, that means y equals 1 is a solution. And it's easy to find the other solution by Vieta because we know that the product of the roots is c over a, which is negative 41. So from here, we get y equals 1 and y equals negative 41. So those are going to be the two solutions that we get from this equation. But y is equal to u squared. So from here, we get u squared is equal to 1, which means u is equal to 1 or u is equal to negative 1. Good. What about the second part? Well, if u squared is equal to negative 41, we do not get any real solutions from here. We do get complex solutions. What kind of complex solutions do we get? Well, we do get the square root of 41i and the negative square root of 41i. So those are going to be the solutions that we get. Now, we are still trying to find the value of x, but what is the relationship between u and x? If you go back to where we substituted, x is equal to u minus 1 or u is equal to x plus 1, right? So u is equal to x plus 1. Let's write that down here. So we're going to be back substitute using this. Well, from this one, we're going to be getting... So basically, if u is equal to x plus 1, then x has to be 0. So that's one of the solutions. If u is equal to negative 1, then x needs to be negative 2. So those are going to be two of the solutions. And if you remember, here we had found that u is equal to 0. That's one of the other solutions. And if u is equal to 0, that means x is equal to negative 1. So those are going to be our real solutions. If we're looking for complex solutions as well, then from here, u is going to equal square root of 41i. And if you subtract 1 from it, you're going to get the x value. So it's going to be like negative 1 plus minus the square root of 41i. And these are going to be the complex solutions. That's it. This is a quintic equation, which is pretty interesting. And how many solutions did we get? We got five solutions because, as you know, a quintic polynomial is supposed to have five solutions, real and or complex. Okay, thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, tell others and have a good one until the next video. Bye-bye.